the heal brand or quick heal fire brand as some might say is meta for so many things any group content whether it's raiding fractals t4s challenge modes or any meta trains as well as also in world v world and pvp guardians have got so much utility the only time this class might struggle is in solo content when it's not with the group as it shines best when providing boons and doing support. In this guide we're going to look not just at the heal variation but also the DPS heal variation, give you a different couple of playstyles to consider and teach you how to account for different fights and different traits. Due to the complexity of playing Healbrand we're going to have a look at two bolts. First of all, we'll have a look at the Absolute Carry Healer Tank build. Now you don't have to run this much toughness. Obviously the higher the toughness, the more chance you will be of tanking. You can, instead of using Givers, use Harriers, even Minstrels, although probably between Givers and Harriers would be the best. Obviously if you have full Harriers, your toughness will be 1k and then you will be basically the off healer. But generally heal brands in Raiden are kind of designated as tanks. Running a very high toughness build is completely fine and you tr probably will be end up being tank. It's also fairly decent if you start going into tier 4 or challenge mode fractals to run very high toughness just to get used to the idea of fractals. You can always switch out then to either more of a Harriers build or Celestial build. For landscape, high toughness again is just so good. Yes, you'll lack the DPS but you'll survive more encounters and you'll be able to pump out more heals and keep everybody else alive better. So it just depends on your playstyle, how you want to gear. Regardless of what stat you choose to focus on, your rune will be rune of the monk. The extra healing, boon duration and also the percentage heal based on boons given makes it the best rune for all boon healers. Let's have a look at your weapons. A staff is absolutely mandatory as you need it for might stacking and also some big healing. For your sigils you want concentration and transference. You want the same sigils on your offset of weapons. Generally you'll have an axe for extra fury and a pull, with your offhand being a shield. Although you can use a mace, the mace does give better regen, protection and Aegis uptime and is very good for tanking encounters. This set of weaponry is basically for the healing variation. We'll have a look at the other variation of gear now. Sometimes in raiding and meta events and even in fractals, you don't actually need a continuous heal source. Sometimes you might need Aegis provided it or certain mechanics done. And therefore, it's nice to have a healer who can do a little bit more DPS. Therefore, phasing fights quicker and helping the team do a bit more can also make healing pressure a lot easier in the long run. That is why you have the Celestial Heal Brand build. We'll have a look at it. The Celestial Heal Brand build is a very simple concept. You'll use complete Celestials which is fairly easy to get as a lot of the trinkets and accessories and jewelry drop from Fractals. And also Celestials is pickable from all selectable stat selectable pieces no matter what piece it is. This will allow us to get lots of power, protection, health, precision, condition damage, concentration, expertise and the like. It gives you everything you need in small quantities. Therefore we're not going to heal tremendous amounts. Technically we're at about half of a normal heal power from a heal brand build, but also not having Rune of the Monk will affect our healing tremendously, so it's a bit less than half, probably at about a third. We we'll use Rune of the Traveler for extra stats and boon duration as well as condition damage. With our weapons, we'll use Smoldering for extra burn duration because Firebrands do like that burning, and for our off sigil, will use transference for the extra healing. This will set you at just under 100% burning duration. You can always use expertise infusions to help cap it. Although I do recommend rather going for healing power if you do feel uncomfortable. You will also have high toughness around the 1675 mark, which means generally you will probably end up tanking. Also, your boon duration is at about 60%. You will struggle to keep up some boons like might because also your trait tree changes slightly. So just be aware of this. Also, if you do struggle, try pick yourself up with an Alak source that produces quite a lot of might, like heal a mech, mech or something of that sort. For weapons, you're going to go for an axe on your main hand and a torch in your offhand. 
you can always switch the torch out for a shield if you do feel uncomfortable because sometimes having that extra Aegis or the dome from shield 5 is just too good to pass up. But in certain fights this would be the way you would go with a staff on your offhand. The staff like I said is very important for helping stack boons like might and also good swiftness and blast healing. Food and utilities are quite tough to lock down. Depending on what traits you take, whether you take Honorable Staff or Empowering Spirit will play around with your amount of concentration and will also change the concentration you have while using a Staff as opposed to not. This can affect your Boona duration completely and therefore change the kind of food that you would maybe take. Generally though, for Heal Brand and Celestial Heal Brand, for meta is either the Sprice Fruit Salad for the extra concentration, especially if you're not taking Honorable Staff. The minus incoming damage will make you personally more survivable as well as the healing power. Another good option is the fruit salad with mint garnish. This changes the minus incoming damage for outgoing healing making you just do better heals on the group. The cheaper option of this especially if you're taking honorable stuff is to go for rice balls. Quite cheap and also just as good. The only thing they lack is the concentration. If you do want to try squeeze out a little bit more DPS Kind of an option you can consider is something like the beef calpacho with concentration and power. It's not really going to make a big difference, but it will up your DPS by a couple of hundred. The cheaper version of this being the soul pastry. For utilities, meta again is the bountiful maintenance oil. This will always kind of stay meta for most boon healers. You can consider some things to give you extra concentration, especially if you're playing the celestial bolt and the healing pressure is not much. Getting a little bit of extra concentration will free you up and give you more leeway on your rotation so you can focus on doing better DPS. Have a look at this, have a look at your stats and see what's going to give you the best utility and also probably one of the cheaper ones. Let's have a look at the specialization Honor. Honor will be taken whether you're doing Raiding, Fractals and whether you're playing the Heal variation or the Celestial Heal variation. Honor is always taken. In Column 1, Invigorated Bulwark, every time that uh, Aegis blocks an attack or Mace 3 blocks an attack, you get increased outgoing healing by 5% for 20 seconds. It's an actual incredible long duration. As well, Mace's skills, boons last longer and their cooldown is quicker. This is a meta in terms of some fractal builds. Protective Reviver, although not really meta, it creates a dome around you when resing a target. It will help res the target by 15% or on explosion, as well as also being a knockback and a slight heal. It's not a great skill, but it can be useful in some bag pug groups. Protector's Restoration is considered meta for healing in raiding and the celestial builds in both raiding and fractals. It creates a little bit of healing on symbols, extra protection uptime, and allows your symbols to last longer, therefore meeting more boon up time of your symbol. It's a very very big skill to use and should only be considered to be dropped in Invigorated Bulwark if you're in a fight where you're going to use a lot of Aegises to block attacks. The minor trait Selfless Daring heals at the end of a dodge roll. This is incredibly useful and actually something that some heal brands might forget to do is to actually use their dodges to heal people but obviously not use them off cooldown to make sure that you have them when you need them. In column 2, Honorable Staff gives you concentration and additional concentration as well extra recharge on staff skills. This is considered meta in some fractal build although if you are in charge of producing might by yourself do not consider this skill as there's another skill you need to take. But if you are struggling for your quickness uptime and also your healing, Honorable Staff is a fairly decent choice and can be used quite often. Pure of Heart is okay. It's not the greatest skill. Every time an Aegis blocks, you get extra healing. Empowering Might. Empowering Might is the option that most is taken in raiding and even in some fractals, allowing you to gain Might when critting. It's very decent in the Celestial build as you will have more precision, therefore more crit chance. Getting Might up on a heal brand can be quite tricky. If your Alak companion can produce some Might, you can consider dropping this and going for Honorable Staff. If not, Empowering Might is mostly meta taken. In Column 3, 
Pure of voice is a fairly decent skill and might see some play in fights maybe like Slothazor where conditions can be a bit of a problem. Force of Will is a fairly decent skill as well, increased healing power based on vitality. Although meta for most builds is Writ of Persistence. All symbols create extra healing and increase their duration. This is a fairly big skill as it creates more boon up time and extra healing every single time you use a symbol. Now this is where the specializations branch off. For a pure healing build, we'll go into Virtues. For the first minor trait, every tome that you enter will produce extra boons. This is actually quite important to remember as you need to maintain decent might regen and prod uptime based on different fights. In column 1, the second trait Resolute Subconscious is fairly decent although an extremely long cooldown of 30 seconds. Most meta builds will consider Master of Consecrations, but then you need a Consecration skill. So any time in a fight where you run a Consecration skill, which most likely will be Sanctuary or Wall of Reflection, this is the skill that you need to pick to increase their duration and also reduce their cooldown. It's considered meta for most fights as CC is pretty big, but in a fight where you don't require CC or Reflect, you can leave it on Resolute Subconscious. In Column 2 of Virtues, there's only one option, Absolute Resolve. When opening Tome 2, you get 3 Condi Cleansers as well as extra healing. In Column 3, Battle Presence is definitely the most useful. Extra passive healing, Endurance Regeneration and it's also shared to nearby allies. Although, for extra stability, Indomitable Courage can be useful in certain fights. Now if you do want to try the Celestial Hillbrand build, you'll take Radius to the set of Virtues. In Column 1, you'll take Right Handed Strength, Extra Power and Precision, Allowance for some more damage. This also procs Empowering Might more often, helping with Might uptime. Renewed Justice is also quite a decent passive minor trait. This allows you to get your Tome 1 back even quicker, especially on Landscape and even some Fractals. If you have a torch for your offhand, you'll take Radiant Fire, increasing the duration, reducing the cooldowns, and also proc in a second Zealot's Flame. This increases your DPS quite substantially and is a very good pick. If you don't use a torch as your offhand and maybe take a shield for certain fights, you can consider Retribution for a slight bit of passive damage, although it's not going to make up as much as if you had a torch in your offhand. Your third minor trait also deserves some recognition, as it increases crit chance on burning foes. This will also help you get more empowering might stacks. This is why we can run a lower boon duration, as we do get passive might. For column 3, there's only one way to go. Amplified Wrath. Increased burning duration applied from passive effects on the Virtues 1 and increased damage. This is just a high damage output that will help you just do more damage as a healer. And now finally for the Firebrand specialization. Liberator's Vow is the meta choice for most builds, even though Unrelenting Criticism and Archivist of Whisper are such good skills. Liberator's Vow is required to keep up a lot of the quick uptime. Notice that there is a second second cooldown on the skill. Let me try explain it to you this way. Without the trait in column 2 which I'll get to, your heal skill has a 12 second recharge time. That's affected by alacrity, so that will be about 9.6 seconds, right? This skill recharges every 7 seconds. So most guides do recommend you to use two charges off cooldown and then use it every single time you get your second charge and keep yourself at one charge. What this will do is every time you use that heal skill, it will proc Liberator's Vow and give you the quickness. Don't be fooled by all these showing that it gives a quickness charge on every use. It will only proc when it Liberator's Vow is off cooldown. Swift Scholar is a quite a good skill as well. Every single time you open a tome, you get quickness. Notice this also has an 8 second cooldown. You can time up Swift Scholar with Liberate's Vow if you are struggling for quick uptime. Opening the tome when using the heal skill and then closing the tome again will provide you with the quickness and help you when you do struggle for your uptime. Column 2 and Firebrand can seem a little bit more complicated. Let me explain to you the choices. 
Weighty terms is generally meta for most builds as it decreases recharge time of mantras, taking it from 12 seconds to 9.5 seconds. This still works out perfectly by using two charges and waiting for the second charge to proc Liberator's Vow. Even with perfect alacrity uptime, it will still be perfect for stacking quickness. Trading weighty terms helps with more than just your quickness uptime, it also helps you with all other boons that mantras provide. Protection, resolution, might, and also regen. Weighty terms is fairly decent for all of this. Remember also, bursting your last charge produces slow. If you're in a clutch situation where you need to slow a mob down, you can do this, although try not to, as the recharge time takes quite long once you've burst the final tome. Stalwater speed is interesting, but not super viable. Maybe in certain landscape fights, it could be considered, but generally with raiding and fractals, it's not really looked at very often. Legendary Law is also a very good option. If you're struggling to keep up might, Legendary Law allows you in Tome 1 to get extra might stacks. Considered meta for the Celestial Heal brand build, especially in Fractals, this allows you with your lower boon duration to keep a high might stack count. Especially if you're the sole provider of might, even in raiding, you can consider this skill. The first trait in column 3, Stoic Demeanor, is an important skill to use, especially if you're playing the heal variation and not the celestial, as your might uptime might struggle, as your precision is not high enough to proc empowering might often enough. Therefore, the Stoic Demeanor allows you to stack might every time you slow, mob, CC, any foe. This helps with your might uptime, especially due to your low precision. If you're playing the more celestial heal brand build, quick fire is the way to go. Retain the passive of justice, which is your tome one, even while it's on cooldown, as well as granting ashes of the just any ally you provide quickness to. This increases your overall DPS quite substantially. Lastly, in column three, Law Master, a very good skill to have. If you're playing the normal heal brand variation and not the celestial, and if someone else is providing high might uptime, you can switch away from Stoic Demeanor and take Law Master. This recharges your page shows of your tomes much more quickly, and this allows you to do more utility and better healing more often. Let's have a look at two situational trade trees. If you're solely in charge of providing vulnerability, you might need to look for something like this. Zeal, Wrathful Spirit, Furious Focus, and maybe Eternal Armory. You can obviously play around with this quite a bit, but sometimes in a fight, if you're the tank, for example, Twin Lagos, you might solely be responsible for applying vulnerability. A trait tree like this one, with, obviously, Sword of Justice, will be able to maintain full vulnerability on the target. If not, sometimes if you stack a lot of Mirages, vulnerability can suffer and therefore DPS. It does mean that you might have to play around with your utilities, but the output of DPS for the entire raid group will be well worth it. In some situations, you'll even dip into Valor. Maybe something along this lines of a trade tree. Although if you're hand kiting on Deimos as a core guardian, you might even go into Monk's Focus, making meditation skills do some big healing. Merciful Intervention, for example, does close to 6k heal just with this trade tree setup. This is the ultra survivable type of tank tree. There's a couple of traits you can play around with here, but this is more situational. Let's have a look at your weapon skills. We'll start with the staff. Your auto attack is an only damaging spell, no healing, although it does become AoE further down the attack chain. Skill 2 is a healing skill, but note it is also a blast finisher. This can be used to either cleanse conditions or stack might. Remember that blast in a fire field makes more might, blast in a light field cleanses, and blast in a water field is extra healing. Star 3 is a heal skill, because remember we've traded in for the extra healing on symbols, as well the extra duration. There's also a light field, so therefore if you blast Staff 2 into Staff 3, you can use it for extra Condi cleanse. It also has a good source of swiftness, and it has quite a far range. Staff 4 is quite a strong skill, 
probably one of your strongest healing skills as well as your source of might generation. Nine stacks of might and some big healing, although you are rooted and placed while channeling the skill. Very important to use off cooldown. Star 5, a very interesting skill as it doesn't necessarily work in raids and in fractals, although it is a light field and enemies shouldn't be able to cross the line. Let's have a look at the axe now. The axe auto attack is very big in the celestial form, although in the heal form not as big. Stacking condies try to finish every axe rotation especially in its celestials. Axe 2, a very good source of fury and also remember traded symbols in our trait tree, therefore a little bit of healing as well as a cripple. Try to place this down off cooldown to make sure that healing and boons is on group. Axe 3 is probably the most important skill of having an axe and therefore the reason why it's mostly recommended. It's a 600 range defines pull as well as 3 targets. You also use this to proc stoic demeanor. Let's have a look at the mace. Remember the mace is the weapon that I would recommend if you're new to heal brand. At the end of your auto attack rotation, you have an AoE heal, which is fairly decent, 5 targets, therefore just attacking will allow you to do some good passive healing. Skill 2 is your symbol skill. Placing this down will allow you to pulse regen on the group as well as being an initial heal. It's also a light field. Mace 3 is a very decent skill. Channeled block. When you take damage during the channel duration, you will give Aegis to 5 targets around you. This is fairly decent in a lot of raids and even fractals. To purposely bait attacks, be hit with them while channeling your Mace 3 to give Aegis to protect against another attack. As well, this is also a source of protection. Shield of Judgment, Shield 4. This is the absolute god tier ability. Extra protection which is good for your protection uptime, although on the demand Aegis. This skill is the skill you'll use most often to coat your group in Aegis to survive a mechanic. Shield 5, Shield of Absorption, a very very good skill as well. A defiance break bar, a light field, as well as a projectile destruction. This skill will create a dome protecting you from all projectiles, but don't forget to burst it for the extra healing on burst. If you are playing the Celestial Heal Brand variation, you'll have a torch in your offhand rather than a shield. Although don't be scared to switch that out for a shield if you still feel uncomfortable. Even just auto attacking and doing some skills with the set with the axe will do some decent DPS, but adding the torch will just take it to another level. Zealot's Flame, some big DPS, but don't forget that we have taken the trade for Radiant Fire. Just to keep that in mind for the second charge of Zealot's Flame when it procs. As well, Cleansing Flame, a large fire skill that's channeled. You can move while using the skill. Have a look at a Connie Quick Brand rotation for the Axe Torch part of the rotation to keep that in mind when using this in a fight. Although no two fights are the same, I want to try to give you a mental idea of how to start a fight on Heal Brand, especially the full heal variation. You want to try start on your staff. As you move into range of the boss, you'll use staff 4 to start to channel heals and might. Remember to be in combat before, as in raids you will be boon stripped. In fractals you have much more forgiveness as you can pre-boon in most fights. While channeling staff 4, use your mantras to get your might, prot and quickness up to a good standard. Make sure to be facing the direction of your subgroup, as you want to make sure that their quickness up time and boons are covered first rather than any other sub. So while channeling star 4, make sure to use your mantras. Get good quickness, might and prot uptime. Once your subgroup is within range, use Fill My Wrath. Remember, it is a 600 range which is fairly large, but some people do tend to drift off at certain parts, especially in the beginning of fights. Use Fill My Wrath off cooldown, or if you have another skill in that utility slot, have a look at that then. Switch over immediately to either your Axe Shield, your Mace Shield or your Axe Torch depending on your bolt. Throw down your Axe 2 immediately or your Mace 2. This will help to channel some boons and give mighty healing. Axe 3 immediately will help with some extra might stacks 
if you're trying it into Stoic Demeanor. Using Shield 4 when you see incoming damage or mechanics that need to be blocked. Other than that, auto attack. Use Axe 2 again before switching back into Staff. The cooldown and Empower is fairly long, but try to use it off cooldown. If not, consider using your Tome 1, 4 and blasting into it with Staff 2 for a bit of extra might generation. You can also blast into your Symbol of Swiftness or any other light field for some cleanses. This can be super important in some fights like Slothazar and Solus Horror where conditions can absolutely take down a lot of raid groups that are very inexperienced. Again, I just can't understate to you how good Healbrand or Celestial Healbrand is. Raiding, meta, fractals, landscape, soloing, it's such a good and just comprehensive build. And what makes it so good is its utilities, and there are a lot of them. I'll try break down the most important ones and try explain the uses, but I might not do it complete justice. Try use your imagination. In the heal skill, luckily for us it's simple. Mantra of Solace is meta, and the reason for this is the trait we took in Liberator's Vow, getting quickness every 7 seconds. Using a charge from this means that by the time the charge is back, you'll be able to proc Liberator's Vow again, making it help you with your quickness uptime. The only other skill that's comparable is Shelter, a channeled block skill that can be used to save yourself from mine crashes and the like in certain raid encounters where you need to protect yourself from a one-shotter. Mantra of Potence is almost your non-negotiable skill. You require the skill to keep up good quick up time as well as might. You'll burst two of them and leave the final charge as if you burst the final charge you'll have to wait 25 seconds for the skill to recharge. Now the last two utility spots other than the elite utility are optional. You can pick whatever you want based on the fights in these two but there are things that are considered just really good to have. One of those being Mantra of Law, a really good way of keeping permanent regen up. This can affect a lot of classes you DPS as they gain extra boons from having regen. As well, it helps negate the ticking damage from raid encounters. It's always good to have Mantra of Law if you can't think of anything else to bring. It also removes two conditions per charge as well as converts conditions into boons on the final charge. Although, try not to proc the final charge, as the cooldown is also 25 seconds. Another good utility to take is Bow of Truth. Creating a heal on an impact with 15 impacts over 4.5 seconds with 2 charges. This can be quite a good impact heal. There's a slight delay from cost, but the healing received in the area of effect is quite large and can be some good burst healing, especially if combined with Tome 2.5. From your shot utilities, two good options is Advance. Advance has a 5 second cooldown in between charge usages and you have two charges. They regenerate at 30 seconds, but it's a really good source of ages. This can be used to block a lot of encounters mechanics, especially if you think of Deimos challenge mode. You need this to be able to block mine crashes. Another good skill is Stand Your Ground. 5 stacks of stability but with a 30 second cooldown as well as a stun break. This is used in a lot of fights like Karen and even Slothazar. You can use this because the chances that all 5 stacks of stab will be stripped off before a mechanic goes off is very low. A lot of times people will even bring this to Gorsival as this will be a guaranteed way to not get knocked down. Although, advance can be used if you've got better timing than what I do. For Consecration Utilities, make sure that you have Master of Consecrations active as this will increase its duration and reduce their cooldown. Things like Wall of Reflect, reflecting projectiles is an absolute god tier ability in certain fights and needed in fights like Matthias, the one raid boss in Wing 2. As well, Sanctuary is a huge CC as well as projectile destruction and a knockback. This is needed to do some big CC in most fights. Gorsival, Slothazar and a few other fights. Sanctuary is absolute god tier. If you are playing the Celestial Hillbrand build, you might take Purging Flames if you don't require any other utilities. It's also a consecration skill. It removes conditions as well as does some big DPS. And often, this is what I end up taking. Another utility you can consider is Merciful Intervention. 
Shadow Step into allies doing massive AoE 5 target heal as well as reviving in percentage can be quite a good save in some raids or fractals, although not considered a first choice utility, can be good when you don't trust the people around you. Bane Signet. I want to spend a few seconds to talk about this. Bane Signet versus Sanctuary. Sanctuary, if you trade it correctly with 7 pulses, will do 1050 break bar damage, whereas Bane Signet only does 300. But Sanctuary needs time, it needs time to pulse these. Certain fights that's fine, whether you're doing Sabir or Gorsaville, you have time to break the bar. In certain fights there's no time to react or you need to break bars quickly. Like a Deem 1, maybe Zera, things like this, where break bars come and you need to break them instantly. That's where Bane Signet comes in. Another honorable mention are some utilities that are very situation. Hammer of Wisdom. This can be used in the Conjured Amalgamate to help break some shields. Sometimes you're in a fight and you just have free utility slots. You can always take other things, but having an AoE defines break bar that you can kind of place at range can be fairly useful to help for your group survival. Another utility that deserves a mention is the Shield of the Avenger. Placing this down is like having another Tome 3-3. Three, three. You pr provide a projectile destruction dome that you can move into with your party. This is good if you need to move from point to point. You can place them down and run into it, creating projectile destruction domes. A lot of raiders will instantly think of Adina. If you do not have a Ventari bubble, you can use this in conjunction with Shield 5 as well as Tome 3-3 to ensure that you have projectile destruction to move into. Another note with spirit weapons, if you do end up going into zeal and taking 111 for instance, like the tanking build I showed early in the trade tree, you'll have an extra charge on your spirit weapons, making it even easier to use them in those situations. If you're playing the Celestial Healbrand build and you can't think of another utility to take, take Signet of Wrath and just leave it on. You will be capped on your expertise or your burning duration at least, which is your condition that you're most concerned about applying. And this will just give you extra condition damage to do bigger DPS. For the elite utilities there are a few good options, but Feel My Wrath is just the best one. Extra quickness uptime is definitely needed to make this build work, especially in the Celestial Hillbrand build. You do have a little bit more leeway if you have more boon duration. Based on the utilities you take, as in the utilities and food I might add, you can consider Mantra of Liberation. This is a stun break as well as stability. It can be very useful in certain fights like Slothazar and also Gorsaval. A few other fights included. You can consider Signet of Courage if you are doing something like the Hand Kiting build. For the passive healing around you is fairly decent and will keep you alive. Let's go to Tomes for a bit. In Tome 1, depending on whether you're just playing a pure heal brand or if you're playing the Celestial heal brand will determine how you use your Tomes. You want to make sure that to Staff 2 is open, or any Blast skill for that matter. In Tome 1, if you're just playing a pure heal brand, you want to place down your fire field, as in Tome 1 4. Place it down when exiting, blast it for some extra might. This is quite important to keep your might up time based on the traits you take. If you're playing the Celestial Heal Brand build though, you want to obviously use Tome 1, 5, 4, and 2 as often as possible. I suggest looking at the actual Condi Quick brand fire build rotation. On the note of Tome 1, and also in general, note that Tome 1 3 is a pull. This will pull all targets together into an area and can be used for grouping, especially in fractals. This can be quite helpful for big DPS or positioning a target. If you have Stoic and Demeanor traded, this will proc three stacks of might as well. Tome 2 will be your biggest healing tome. And this is the one you'll dip into the most. Tome 3 and 4 provide more boots and therefore I don't necessarily consider them as important. If you do want to affect region and vigor uptime you can consider Tome 2-3. I wouldn't really bother too much with those skills as I feel like they're a waste of pages. Tome 5 is a fairly decent skill. Converting conditions into boons for 5 targets as well as increasing effective healing. This combos to all skills, so even when leaving, any skill you do in that time will do extra healing. Especially skills like your Bow of Truth can ramp up in some big healing if you time it correctly. Tome 2-2 is your Condi Cleanse. 
three conditional removal this can be quite useful in a lot of fights especially if your mantra of law is on cooldown or you didn't take it due to the fight not requiring that match condi cleanse tome 2-1 is a big heal it's a straight channel conal heal if you time and place this correctly and time it up with tome 2-5 you can do some big healing it's effective to think about these things, especially in a fight with Veil vale Guardian, where you've got 90% of everybody's HP been taken off every single time the green explodes. This means that using Tome 2, 5 and 1, as well as timed up with Bow of Truth, will be very, very useful. Remember, you can use utilities while in your Tome, and try to time them up effectively. Tome 3 is a good utility Tome. There are a few things that you might need to dip into in certain fights. If your prot up time is suffering, Skill 1 in Tome 3 is fairly decent to help you cap your prot. Skill 2 in Tome 3 is a soft taunt CC. This can be used to either help break a bar if you're really struggling, or it can be used to proc Stoic Demeanor. Skill 3 in Tome 3 is a skill you'll probably end up using the most in here. It's a projectile reflect, not destruction. So this can be used in certain fights like Matthias to help reflect all the projectiles and help break his bar. As well, this can be used in a lot of fights, Bone Skinner and a lot of landscape fights to help you save a lot of people's lives, stopping projectiles from hitting them and reflecting them, doing damage back at the target. Tome 4, a little bit of extra resistance and a stun break, nothing too major. Tome 3 skill 5 is a protection, stability and ages. This is the skill you'll also dip into a lot. Generally, Tome 3-3 and 3-5 are the skills most used in this Tome. I really hope that this guide has given you the confidence and the knowledge to play Heal Brand or Celestial Heal Brand in different content. Remember, you don't have to ever worry about progressing from Heal Brand to Celestial Heal Brand if you don't want to. If you want to get hardcore, go for it. And pretty much the meta in Fractals is to go away from a healer entirely and to go to more of, I think, a power quick brand something like this it's crazy talk anyway but never worry about that most pug groups will have a heal brand if worst case scenario celestial heal brand and it's fine you should just learn and be comfortable playing the game you want you want to play and the style you want to play in the description below i'm going to link a few different things a few different builds and also one thing i want to mention is even though in my heal brand build i use a quite a high toughness you can use a straight 1k, you can use a 1.5, you can combine Harriers and Givers and anything you want to do. Some people tank with literally full Harriers and one toughness infusion just to take them to a 1005 toughness. You should play the game and the style you want to play. And I really hope that this guide is good for you and that you enjoy it. Have a good one. For more on this build and others just like it, catch me streaming on Twitch. Stop by any time and hang out. If you found this helpful, please subscribe and share with some friends, it will really help grow the channel.